Point of order, the Prime Minister. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker, may I give the House the latest information about the Battle of the Falklands? After successful attacks last night, General Moore decided to press forward. The Argentinians retreated. Our forces reached the outskirts of Port Stanley. Large numbers of Argentine soldiers threw down their weapons. They are reported to be flying white flags over Port Stanley. <laughs> Our troops have been ordered not to fire except in self-defense. Talks are now in progress between General Menendez and our Deputy Commander, Brigadier Waters, about the surrender of the Argentine forces on East and West Falklands. Yeah. I will report further to the House tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, further to that uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker, may I first of all thank the Right Honourable Lady for coming to the House to give us the news, particularly because the news is so good for all concerned, especially especially good because it does appear well, that what she has been able to tell us means that there will be an end of the bloodshed, which is what we have all desired, and I believe that uh, uh, there will be widespread, genuine rejoicing, to use the word that the Right Honourable Lady once used, but there will be genuine rejoicing at the prospect of the end of the bloodshed. Can I say to her also, that there will also be, I'm sure, from the House tomorrow, if the news is confirmed as I trust it will be now, there will be, of course, great congratulations to the British forces that have conducted themselves in such a manner. And if I may say so, to the Right Honourable Lady, I know that we have many, many matters on which, many, many matters on which we will have to have discussions and maybe arguments about the origins of this matter and other questions but i could well understand i can well understand the anxieties and the pressures that must have been upon her during these weeks and i can understand that at this moment those pressures and anxieties may be relieved and i congratulate her upon that <laughs> now, i i believe mr speaker it, it we we can as a house of commons uh, transform what has occurred into benefits for our country as a whole. I believe that that is the way in which we certainly on this side of the House will wish to proceed. I think there are many fruitful lessons in diplomacy and in other matters that we can draw from these occasions, and that certainly will be our determination on this side of the House. Order. I will, I will call both those on, right honourable members oh, in turn. Mr. David Steele. Further to that point of order, will the Prime Minister accept that this is an occasion when the whole House should rejoice in congratulating both the government and the forces involved in bringing this matter, this sad matter, to a satisfactory and peaceful conclusion? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, may I move that? with the Leader of the Official Opposition and the Leader of the Liberal Party in conveying the congratulations, I believe, of the whole House to the Royal Navy, to the Army, to the Royal Air Force and to the Royal Marines and to the Government and to those Ministers who have played a crucial role in the achievement of an extremely successful outcome. Now, I wish all well and particularly those people who have lost their lives and those families who are currently grieving tonight 
that their sacrifice and the sacrifice of their loved ones was a sacrifice that was necessary and inevitable. Oh, Mr. Michael Pott. Could I suggest to the uh, Leader of the House that uh, there is some business that would be transacted, but I would have thought in these circumstances it is much better that the House should adjourn now and that the business should be brought forward on another occasion. I would have think that that is the general desire of the House. The Honourable, Honourable Gentleman shakes his... Right Honourable Gentleman shakes his head, but I think you'll find that that would be the desire of the House. Leader of the House. Speaker, may I move that at this day sitting, notwithstanding the provisions of Standing Order No. 4, prayers against statutory instruments, etc., negative procedure. The motion relating to Public Health Scotland may be proceeded with, though opposed, for one and a half hours after it has been entered upon, and Mr Speaker shall then put any question necessary to dispose of the proceedings thereof, if not previously concluded. The question is, the, an order, I'm about to put the question first. The question is the motion in the name of the Leader of the House, the prisoner's motion. Mr. Christopher Price. A point of order, Mr. Speaker. It is, it is the custom when this sort of occasion occurs for previous leaders of the House to have recognised the feeling of the House and to have arranged the business of the House accordingly. In all the circumstances, Mr Speaker, nobody wants to go on with the business and the Leader of the House knows perfectly well that if the House wishes to prevent that business going through, there are ways and means of preventing it doing so. And we, we have a... We, we have a right to expect that the Leader of the House, who we all respect, would not move a motion of that kind, but come forward with some sort of feeling of how both sides of this House feel and that we shouldn't be expected to go through the business set down and be allowed to leave this sitting at this, at this point. Order. Mr. Bruce Mellan. Further to that point of order, Mr. Speaker, we on this side of the House had already decided not to move the prayer, so this fuss is quite unnecessary and the Leader of the House's motion is quite unnecessary. Yeah.